let's not kid ourselves, guys. We all sucked at one point or another. Some of us are still sucking. That's what she said. And I'm not saying that because you do some of these things we're about to mention that you necessarily suck. It's just we're gonna we're gonna broaden your horizons. We're gonna open your eyes to the opportunities of doing things differently than maybe you're already doing it because there is a better way and I'm here to show you that brand new path to better. So we're talking about eight mistakes that all videographers do at some point in their careers. And without further ado, let's get into the first one. The first mistake is shooting everything. And by everything, I mean all of your B-roll in either 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. I'm not gonna lie. It's not that you should never shoot in either of these frame rates, okay? It does look very beautiful, very slow, very smooth. And even I still shoot in these frame rates. But the thing is you have to be intentional when you're choosing to shoot a certain way. And by shooting all of your B-roll in 60 or 120 frames per second, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the most beautiful, creamy shots that you're, you're gonna get. Sometimes it's more intentional to shoot something in 24 frames. You're always trying to envision, okay, like what is it that yeah, I'm perfect. shooting? What is purposeful here? What is going to lend itself best to this video? And that isn't always shooting in 60 or 120 frames per second. Mistake number two is choosing bad music because of lack of resources or just plain choosing bad music. This portion of the video is sponsored by Licked. Thank you so much Licked for sponsoring this video and I actually have used this service before, before they even approached me to work with me on this video. If you guys remember our moving vlog from almost a year ago now when we first moved into this house, I included a song by Dermot Kennedy and Medusa called Paradise. Yeah, let's do it. Oh my, my, my. There's a thousand miles between you and I. And I actually got the license for this song through Licked. Licked is essentially a music licensing service for chart music. It's built specifically for creators like us who want to use popular and well-known music tracks. And so it was the perfect opportunity for me to get this license on Licked and then use it in one of my videos. I'm sure you guys have seen a David Dobrik video at some point in your lives and you probably noticed he always uses chart music. He always uses popular music. And what this does is it makes the content more relatable for the audience and that can only mean good things for your content and can only help your content perform even better. I for one have always experienced being mid-edit and thinking wow this song that I love listening to on the radio would be perfect for this video I'm working on but I can't use it because the license is too expensive, I don't even know how to get access to it and if I do decide to just throw it in my video then I can't monetize the video and I could risk getting a strike on my channel. Basically with Licked you pay per license and it's 100% claims free. It's really affordable when usually these licenses cost thousands of dollars. This is going to be significantly less than that. The licenses can be for YouTube, some include Facebook and even Instagram as well. And what Licked aims to do is eventually sign every major record label, every major publisher so that all of this music can be available to you. So by supporting Licked, you're helping them grow their platform even larger. But as of right now, they have over 600,000 songs available for you to license. The only thing about each license is that you can use that song as many times you want in one video, but that license doesn't then carry over into additional videos down the line. So one license includes one video. I am so excited to be able to bring this opportunity to you guys because this is something I've always wanted to be able to incorporate in my videos and now I can. And all of the music in this video is from Licked as well. Save 50% off on your first track on Licked and improve your video quality with chart popular hit music. Mistake number three is not using variable ND filters or just not using ND filters at all. I know when I started out, I thought that this was something that was completely unnecessary, that it was expensive and I didn't really need it. Why would I need such a thing when I could just crank the shutter? <laughs> Obviously, that could not be more wrong. If you're planning on shooting video seriously, then this is one of the first investments that you should make. On a film set, this is something they're always using. It is mandatory. It is not optional, okay? ND filters are not optional. Say it with me. ND filters are not optional. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.
A quick note, if you don't know what an ND filter is, of course, your good friend Google will help you out here. But in short, it's basically, if you're if you're out on a really bright day, it's just gonna, it's gonna darken your image so you can keep all of your ideal video settings. That's it. And a variable one has multiple ones and you can just turn it. In fact, we are using one right now. Ooh. Ah. This particular one, if you're looking to purchase it, is the Peter McKinnon Variable ND, I'm guessing the two to five, and it's missed. Mistake number four, and I know all of you have done this because I sometimes make this mistake even now, and that is missing your focus. And one big contributor of that is having an f-stop that is too wide and it's just too shallow. So it's really hard for you to perfectly nail that focus point. And if you're trying to get your entire subject in focus, if you have a really, really shallow focus point or a really wide f-stop, you're only gonna be able to get in focus a small portion of your subject or if it's a person a small portion of their face actually perfectly sharp and another thing to note is that your widest f-stop so shooting at 1 2 1 4 or 1.8 isn't necessarily your sharpest f-stop either it's not going to be the sharpest image for you mistake number five is poor data management as you can see in this lower corner we have our Synology NAS system this is where we back up everything here's the thing if you're starting out and you can't afford something like this but you want to make sure you're doing everything properly at the very least if you're using external hard drives or I hope maybe you can invest in an SSD then get multiple have one as your working drive have another as a backup and one of those drives will eventually go down but guess what? You will be prepared and you will have a backup. Something else you can do is if you're working on an edit, you should have all of your files on multiple hard drives, okay? So you've got one backup of all your video files in one drive, you've got another one on your working drive, okay? But your project file, say that's only on the one drive you're working on. Every day when you finish that edit, you're gonna email that project file to yourself. And then you're gonna have a whole record of those project files in your email and you can just throw them in a folder. And then if that whole drive crashes, you won't completely lose your project file because you'll have it in your email. Mistake number six is not having a good sense of the end result, not making a shot list, not writing a script, not having all of those key materials ready for you when you're on set. So here's the thing, just because you made a shot list or made a script, just because you went through those motions, that's not actually what's going to help you. Having a fully thought out vision of what you're shooting, you thought of every single thing that can go wrong, you know which way they're walking, which hand they pick up a cup with, you know, you've, you've thought out your whole scene entirely, that is what is going to help you out on set. So this is going to do a couple of things for you. One, your shooting time is going to go by way faster. You're not wasting time. You're not doing multiple takes of things. You're not taking multiple shots that you don't actually need in your final edit. And you're spending more time on actually cultivating a well thought out and well executed shot. And then overall, it's going to contribute to a higher quality production because you know what you're doing, you know what you're shooting. And when you go into your editing bay later on, every Everything is going to fit together perfectly like a puzzle piece. Your editing time is going to be faster and the client is going to be way happier with the final result. In the future, maybe you want to be producing, maybe you want to be directing. And that's essentially what is required in these roles is understanding the big picture and all of the little pieces that fit into it and knowing exactly what needs to be done to make that perfect video. Mistake number seven is making sure that your shot is framed perfectly and most importantly, it's level. So especially when you're trying to shoot something very like Wes Anderson style, it's very symmetrical. You have to shoot it perfectly level. You can't fix that in post because the entire perspective is going to be off. So I wouldn't rely on that when you're shooting. Don't rely on fix it in post. Make sure it is level every time when you're on set. And that's one subtle thing that is really going to perfect your shooting. It's just a little tip that I noticed that a lot of people don't really pay enough attention to because just how Having that little bit of a crooked frame, having a little bit of that perspective off really cheapens what could have been an amazing shot. Like this. <laughs> And finally, mistake number eight, our final mistake of the jour, that is attention to detail and making sure that everything is perfect in your shot, that's cleaning up the frame, making sure nothing is messy behind you, everything is 
purposeful and contributes to the aesthetic of the shot. So even when Chris and I were on location, we'd be shooting in an office space, we'd be shooting someone at their desk, we would take a few moments and schedule in that time to just tidy up the work area, really stage it nicely. It's not like we would bring in props, but we would still set everything up in a way that looks nice for the shot because you can be doing your job perfectly, but if everything composed in the shot and all of those props don't support your beautiful frame, then it's still going to look like crap. And all right, those are my eight mistakes for you videographers out there. I hope maybe you learned something new, something that you're gonna pay a little more attention to the next time you're on set. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you Licked for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, please give it a like down below, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell to get notified for all future videos. And I will see you in the next one. And now I need to dry out my armpits because it gets really hot. This is when you play the chicken dance song.